This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Before we start using the structures we just created, I want to discuss the select statement just a little bit. We'll see many examples of select during the sections that follow. We're going to use selects with inserts, updates, deletes, all kinds of stuff. And then we have a join section later that shows how to join multiple tables. But just starting with the basic select, that's the way you return rows from the database. At its most simple syntax, which is what I have on the screen, it's just select asterisk, which means give me all the columns. Asterisk is like a wild card saying, give me all the columns in the table. And we're going to do it from user tables, which we discussed when we were doing the data dictionary. So you can see it just returned each column as a row. I can take this same query, run it in SQL plus, and it returns the same rows, but you can see how it's much easier to read in SQL Developer. And that's why the GUI is generally a better tool. Not only can you browse your data dictionary, but the output is much easier to view. And don't really worry about the data itself. I mean, we just have tables, some information about them. We talked about table spaces, all that good stuff. So this is just for the example of the select statement. Instead of using the asterisk, I can select the column names that I specifically want and see just that data. And actually, if I do that, it'll probably look a little bit better in SQL Plus also. Yeah, so a little bit easier to read that way. Notice that when we select the data, there are commas separated between columns, and it's just from table name. And the from just tells you where to pull from. If we want to see a little bit different information, this time I will pull from the user tab columns. And this is showing me all the columns in all the tables. A select can have an order by, and I'm going to come back to my GUI just because it's easier to view. You can have an order by after the from has to come after saying which order you want it by. In this case, I'm going to order by the column name. So the tables are in whatever order, but the column names are by column name. We say column name, table name. And you can see before yada yada was right here and now it's down here because Y comes after T. So you can do as many columns here as you need to to get the ordering that you need. I can also make the order by ascending or descending. In this example, by default, it's ascending. So it's going to start with the lower value and go up. So it's going to start with A, and then go to B, C, D, E. I can change that so that my column name is descending and table name is ascending. So the table name will still be in the same order, but the columns will go from the lower to the higher. So you can see we started with S's and we work our way up to A. If I only want to include certain rows, I can include a WHERE clause. So I say WHERE the table name equals employees. So instead of getting everything, I'm just going to get for the table name, employees. So now we see the employees table and it has all the columns in descending order. So we just have the table name, start with the S and work our way up. I can just take it off. Ascending is default. And that's why I wanted to look at a couple of different tables. Instead of the equals employees, I can say in and give it a list, comma separated, inside parens. I get my employees and my departments in column order. The equal sign says give me an exact match. The in says give me a list of, and then also have where I can retrieve rows that are like something else. And I use the like operator for that. So here we have select table name, column name from the same table. This time we're saying we're table name like test percent. Percent sign is a wild card. So we're saying where it starts with test, return the values. So all the ones that start with test are coming back. We can put the wall card anywhere. So we could actually say, if I wanted to see all of the tables that say end with a K, because I can see there's a couple in there. I just go ahead and hit that. And now you can see every table ends with a K. So the percent can go anywhere and you can have multiples. So I could say only ones that have a B in them that end with K. So that looks like the only one that has a B and ends with a K. You can use the underscore to wildcard a single column. So in this case, I've got two underscores. So it's going to be test, two letters, K. 
And I have a couple in there like that. Test check, test TFK, test TPK. So it found a few matches. The underscore replaces one character. The percent replaces any number of characters. And that's the generic select. I think that's good enough for now because what we're going to do for the rest of this chapter is actually use it in a variety of ways. And I think that'll make a lot more sense than just beating on this particular horse.